Oi, welcome to the 30th Bienal de São Paulo audio guide. Many of the founding myths of the visual arts, the shield of Achilles, that surface on which an entire world of narrations is imagined, or the shield of Perseus, who killed Medusa merely with the mortal reflection of her own image, or the surface of water on which Narcissus contemplated his own beauty, in all of these myths, image is related to language. Image becomes the source or a consequence of language. In the beginning there was image with word, word with image. One of art's tasks has always been the alchemy between words and images. The precarious, never fully achieved, ever challenging balance between words and things. Contemporary art, notably since the conceptual arts dismantled modern certainties in a self-sufficient and autonomous form of art, has made this problem of language and image one of its fundamental focuses. From this point on, the second floor of the biennial is also consecrated to artists who center their oeuvres on these concerns. We are introduced to this section by Chilean poet Diego Machieira, visual poem El Anapurna, a poem duct of photocopied public archive images specially produced for the 30th biennial. Opposed on a transversal axis between the two lateral edges of the building, Fernanda Gomez's almost purely spatial work concludes the syntaxis of a space, deconstructing it with the same architectural material as the biennial. And contrast with the oeuvre of Juan Luis Martinez, the Chilean poet who brought the legacy of Mallarmé to contemporary intensity equivalent to the work of the great European conceptual artist of his time. In the middle, Eduardo Gilo poses letter and voice, oral prophecy and the writing of history. A large central grouping of works evolves beginning at this point around the large axis of galleries that contain the works of Ian Hamilton Finlay, Elaine Reichek, Michel Aubry and Arthur Bispo de Rosario. These are oeuvres in which language collapses times, reinvents the past, elaborates the collision between paradisiacal Arcadia and historic violence, in which the language of cinema and theatre are specialized to oppose ironic resources that ponder the very history of art, the hybrid nature of the present. They are oeuvres, as with Arthur Bispo de Rosario, in which string is used in an almost performative way to sew words onto things, to sew dreams onto symbols, as if in order to keep life from becoming undone alone it seems. Language as the basis of image or images as imagistic potential feed the works of Erika Baum in the form of found archives and photographic poetry and Odiris Malasso made of found images and deconstructed texts, like labyrinths that are impossible to read. Morris, for his part, uses the found language of the tabloid press in Mexico to refer to violence and death, while Franz Mon proposes his moratorium to us as a language tomb, a place where mortality is spoken of in repeated and superimposed sentences to the point of absolute saturation. Finally, how can one make nature in its most discreet, almost kitsch element, a rose stripped of its petals, which are then classified, drawn, transferred into a language able to speak to us of death and of the fragility of existence. Roberto Obregón transforms conceptual seriality into this language of wounded existence. <laughs>